Welcome to Kenyan Dog Tales. My name is Dr. Luziana. Today, I want to talk about ectopic pregnancy. And to explain this a little better, I want us to take a biology lesson. Now, picture a gourd-shaped organ sitting in the pelvis, the neck down, the bottom up. Now that is the uterus. On either side of the uterus are ovaries, the right one and the left one. Now, there are two tubes attached to the base of the uterus that bring eggs from the ovaries, from the right and from the left. Now, those are called fallopian tubes. Now, once an egg is released, it travels down the fallopian tubes into the uterus. If there is no conception, then it is shed and the lady gets her menstrual period. Now, if it happens that there are sperms along the way, the egg will be fertilized somewhere around the fallopian tubes and it will start multiplying and slowly, slowly, in the course of eight days, it settles in the uterus and a baby grows for nine months and then the baby is born. Now, nature has a funny way of dealing with us. Sometimes the egg is fertilized along the fallopian tubes and then it gets stuck in the fallopian tubes. The baby grows in the fallopian tubes for about two months. And because the fallopian tube is not elastic, it is not endowed to grow and accommodate a baby for nine months, it bursts and there is a lot of bleeding. And she will continue bleeding until she dies unless something is done. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't see the bleeding outside. She bleeds internally and maybe just a slight bit of blood is seen and that is what brings her to hospital and the pain that she is feeling. Now that is an emergency, a dire emergency. So the patient has to be taken to theater. The tube is located. It is cut and tied and bleeding is arrested. And incidentally, that tube cannot get pregnant again. She cannot use that tube, but the other tube is still intact and she will get pregnant. So she will function with one tube. Just like somebody can function with one kidney. Somebody can function with one lung. So she can function with one tube. Now to explain this a little better, let me tell you a story about a friend of mine, very close friend of mine. He had to go to theater to perform an emergency operation because a lady had an ectopic pregnancy. So he went in, opened the lady, located the tube that was bleeding and he pulled it out, tied it and cut and made sure there was no more bleeding. There was no bleeding from the tied tubes but he realized that in the cavity there was still more bleeding. So he started looking around for what could have happened and incidentally the other fallopian tube had another ectopic it is so very rare to have twin pregnancy, both of them ectopic pregnancies. In fact, the chances that such would happen are one in five million. It doesn't happen many times. And he had to repeat the same operation on the other tube, and the lady was fine. She was fine in that she was not bleeding, but she was not fine in that she couldn't get pregnant again. When the tube is cut, the lady cannot get pregnant through that tube. Now when both tubes are cut, the lady cannot get pregnant normally. Fortunately, we have another option. The option is in vitro fertilization. Most people know it as test tube baby. But then unfortunately, it's so very expensive, not many women 
can afford it? Or should I have said, not many couples can afford it? Because this is a couple affair. Where it's available, women have been helped, they've gotten pregnant, and life goes on. For those that cannot afford it, like our patient with a bilateral tubal pregnancy, she was in a government hospital. And the reason that she went to a government hospital is that she couldn't afford private hospital care. So for her, her deal was done. I wouldn't remember very well if she had any other babies before that, but if she didn't, she has been condemned to a life of infertility. It's very unfortunate. So what causes ectopic pregnancy? In our setup, the commonest cause is blockage due to infection. You know, sometimes women will get infections in the reproductive system. You will hear of things like PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. Anything that you cause pus to be produced in the system can block the tubes. And once the tubes are blocked, then it's not possible for the baby to come down into the uterus. In very severe cases, it's not possible for the woman to get pregnant because the sperms cannot pass through. How does one know they are having an ectopic pregnancy? Most women will not even realize that they are pregnant because the pregnancy is still very early, less than two months. So the one sure sign that she will get is pain, lower abdominal pain, and it's sometimes very severe. Very occasionally, she might get just a bit of bleeding. We call it spotting. So the bleeding is not alarming. So the woman will not go to hospital because of the bleeding. But meanwhile, she's bleeding internally. There's a lot of bleeding. In fact, we'll be surprised that some women will collapse in the house because of internal bleeding. They'll be taken to hospital in a collapsed state. Some of them will not even make it to hospital. And those that do might even die on the theater table. But if something is done early enough, then the tube that is affected is cut, and the woman is fine. Now, what causes the infections that block the fallopian tubes? You know, these sexually transmitted infections, or some other infections that are not necessarily sexually transmitted, they form scarification in the tubes. They get scarred and they cram together and they block. So we need to take our infections very seriously. The minute you notice a bit of discharge, just have it attended to so that it does not destroy your fallopian tubes. Some people have been asking how ectopic pregnancy can be prevented. There really isn't any way you can prevent an ectopic pregnancy, but there are some precautions that you can take. Have your infections treated urgently and properly. If you can avoid infections, the better. I'm talking about people who have multiple sexual partners. You can limit your sexual partners, or you can use condoms. This is an area I don't want to venture into, but some people can get that kind of assistance. So limit infections. Should you get infections, have them treated early. And that hopefully should help you avoid a topic pregnancy. Thank you for watching. Please remember to share, subscribe, and like. Thank you.